contract at street level, which, why is it not feasible in Penang? Now, in Penang, there is no planned corridor for rail transit. Okay, now if you see in Kuala Lumpur, you will ask why certain stretch can be on LRT system is on the ring. Why? Because those are old KT, KTMB railway lines. You know something? Uh, Tansawing to Ampang is on the ring. So that's why that one is KTMB reserve. That's why when they build the LRT, that stretch is on the ring. But you come to town where there is no corridor allocated, you always plan that it is on top of the road so that you work on the road itself. You don't. You have to minimize land acquisition. So you see, if there is no planned corridor for rail transit, new transit lines need to be parachuted on the road space to minimize land acquisition and social impact. Okay, in Penang, you see those are the Penang photograph. How to parachute a rail transit that is on grade into these kind of roads? To achieve the state government objective of 40% public transport mode share, the proposed system needs high capacity and hence need for a dedicated corridor. Now, if the state government is to build trams, there are two ways. Either you sacrifice the traffic lane, that means you have to sacrifice at least two lanes to implement the, the, the so-called uh, tram or LRV on the grid. That means uh, you will take away two lane minimum because one is up and down. Okay? Then there will be severe impact to the already congested road system. Now, if the state government were to maintain the number of traffic lanes, you say, okay, you build on the grid, but you maintain back the traffic lane, then you have to have acquired adjacent land and buildings. Imagine going along Domo Road, you acquire all those shops uh, to get back your traffic lane, how expensive it will be. That's why I say the cost of building a tram, a dedicated tram in Penang is very expensive and massive social consequence and public outcry for, for the rise. Now, during construction, these are some of the examples. In Edinburgh, where they try to do a dedicated, so you have to close the whole road, total road closure, estimate two years. Now, all this, oh, those roads in Edinburgh, I'm sure, a lot of utilities are running underneath it. So you, when you construct, you have to shift the utilities, relocate. Because if not, you build a tram on top, anything wrong with the utility, you cannot dig up and do maintenance. You have to shift all the utilities to one corridor. Underneath the tram, underneath the tram has to be re relocated to a corridor. Now, last time there is a three lane, become one lane. If the state want to maintain the three lane, they have to acquire two lane shop houses, all this will be affected. And this relocation of underground utilities is required because if you were to remain there, no opportunity for future utility maintenance and track underway. Under the Another reason why we need to be elevated is because there are a lot of junctions. You know? So, if a tram is on grade, then we have to allocate here, dedicate it, signalize it properly. So that when the tram come, priority is given to the tram, all traffic have to be stopped. Next. Or the other way, if crossing over to the other road. Next. So, if the tram is dedicated, you have to allocate like that, and then you have to signalize, and all this will cause the congestion on the... How many of these? Either you build a flyover across the, 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 the tram, or you do an underpass. In Penang, you know it's so... The buildings are quite near, you go to... Actually, why the rail, we are trying to go to a populated area so that you will get the population. That is why it is 
almost impossible to do that. Thanks. Now, tram pedestrian accidents. This is the statistic taken from the Victoria Government Australia. You know, if you can see pedestrian tram pedestrians, they are all same level. It's not improved even after how many years they still have this accident. Next. Vehicle accident is worse. 200 every quarter. And then you see, it's not reducing. Even they have strict rules. They still have, you imagine all this. Once it's accident, you imagine the, the jam that it will cause. So, examples of trend building on it. On, on grade, the latest one, which is the Sydney CBD and Southeast. They use the 12 kilometer LRV project, and this is extreme level. They reported a budget overrun of 600 million Aussie, and total up to 2.6 billion Aussie for 12 kilometer. Approximately Aussie 183 million. Now it's 220, it is elevated. And you build, you still have those accidents. If this is elevated, it's just dedicated for the rail, they can go. They don't have to think of any vehicles that will come into their path and all these things. So this is thanks. Now for the Pompa Penang Airport Corridor, now we are trying to show you why is it why is it better to go elevated? Because if if you want to use LRV to be on grade, also can, but then ours we study that, okay? Of course, uh, first the LRT here is economically viable. The EIRR, Economic Internal Rate of Return, is greater than 10%. So it is an LRT system elevated. It will form the main north-south backbone and connects to Sebrang Prime in future to Butterworth. As I said, all the other lines are implemented at different times. So now we can propose that it is the monorail that is going to Ayritam, monorail that is going to <coughs> Tanjung Pakong, you know. But that is implemented in phase two, which is about 10 years time. You know, at that time, then we have to review, study the feasibility again, and maybe technology has changed. You see, it's not that it must be a monorail. But after that, we can show you why now we think that motorail is also suitable after we look at it. Now, now with all these different systems, the most important actually is, you have various systems, the most important is actually is a single transfer of trans, trans passengers. This is the most important. You can have multiple systems, but you will have a single transfer. It means you get down from one system, you walk across the platform, you can hop onto another system. And physical inter integration, most of it, the three lines will be have an interchange at Siaboy. And also the light, the light is where the Georgetown to Butterworth rail lines will come in. Okay? And then most important, a single ticketing system. You pay into one system, you get out of the platform, you can go to another platform, just hop onto the train. When you exit, you go through, the ticket will tell you what is the distance you have covered. That is the most important. Which in KL now, they are integrating all the commuter train, the Pasarana, the rapid bus, and all these things. So they are also trying to implement a single ticketing system. 